UK YouTubers and space detectives. Today we're looking at the latest images from the InSight mission that's just landed on Mars. And a, a very successful landing it was, which, uh, which I watched live, like many of you may have done last night or yesterday evening. Uh, very exciting. Uh, congratulations to all the team involved. Brilliant work, as usual. Um, let's get on with it. I'm going to show you the images. Right. This is what we're here for. I'm not going to spend ages chatting about all the different aspects of the mission. What I will do is provide you with lots of links uh, for all the information you need. Now, there's many ways you can get hold of this information. There's the the, uh, the gallery page here, the raw image page. All these links will be below in the description below, so you can get all the links you need to follow the mission in the future and keep up to date, okay? That's what I'm here for. There's also this, I'll put a link to this. This is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's uh, last seven days photo journal. Very useful link to have um, because basically it will give you all the Mars and NASA images that have been taken recently in the last week. Uh, so you can get all the different stuff here, including um, maps and illustrations and diagrams as well. Everything basically. Uh, this is the, the latest image from the surface taken by InSight and there's a TIFF available. The TIFF isn't actually that much better than the JPEG, actually. Uh, I'll show you those now. Um, I'll provide all the links below, so if you want any of this stuff, just go down to the description and you'll find all the links there to follow the mission and all the other pages uh, that are related to it. Uh, we have the robotic arm here, which is folded back and I've, I've enlarged this so that it doesn't pixelate too much. The quality of the images isn't great. It's only a one megapixel camera, similar to the sensor used on both the Curiosity rover and the Opportunity rover, which has now um, died on us, unfortunately. Um, now, these are not built for, high, for taking really high quality images. They're really built for reliability because of the, the extreme temperature changes on the surface of Mars, uh, because it does get extremely cold at night. Uh, but it may be quite hot during the day, uh, up to almost 90 degrees uh, in the summer. And this particular lander, the InSight, isn't very far from the actual Curiosity rover. It's, it's almost due north, I think only about three or 400 miles. I'll show you a, a, a diagram of that in a second. Well, here's the first image. Um, you've got some rocks in the background, you've got the typical um, orange filter that they've used as well, like all the other uh, Mars landers uh, that use the orange filter. It's quite a large rock here and another one there. But uh, the, the, the point of this mission is not to take gazillions of photos of, of the Mars surface like some of the other Mars missions do. That's not the point of it. The point of this thing is to actually drill into the ground and take uh, seismic readings and, and listen out for earthquakes and also take temperature readings as it drills the probe and push or hammers the probe down into the surface up to uh, hopefully about 16 meters. And uh, it has the, the, ex, the extension sort of uh, cables coming out here with the, uh, the penetrator, <laughs> which sends the probe down. Now, this apparently hammers it down gradually, very slowly, hammers it down uh, one smack at a time. And it gradually kind of drills or pushes its way down through the rock. And uh, will then take some temperature readings to work out what's going on below the surface and may find signs of water down there. I, I have shown uh, water on Mars, and uh, only, although in a, only very small amounts, and I actually think in some areas, especially some of the low-lying craters, that there is liquid water just below the surface, so I don't think they need to go down that far. But obviously they want to go down that far because they want to take temperature readings, which are would, would give us an idea of what the state of the inner parts of Mars are, whether they are molten or, or whether there's geological activity still going on and uh, magma and, and uh, that kind of thing. 
and geothermal activity. So this will be interesting. I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see what they come up with here because um, if my theories are correct, at least in some areas, uh, there are, I think is liquid water at only a couple of metres below the surface. And in some very warm areas like Gale Crater, which is very deep down, about four and a half kilometres down below the surface, it is much warmer and there's geothermal activity going on just below. And this is one of the reasons why the Curiosity was sent to Gale Crater, because uh, of the geothermal activity that was picked up by some of the satellites uh, using thermal imaging spectrometers and cameras, okay? So there's, there's, there's geothermal activity on Mars, although in certain spots. Now, whether this spot they've landed on is, is particularly active, let's hope so, because that would be interesting. And we also have this thing here, which will be taking seismic readings and, and listening out for earthquakes and, and uh, perhaps sending pulses into the ground. I think this thing actually sends it a pulse down and reads the reflections back as well. So it could do all sorts of stuff. This is pretty cool. Um, you've got the two solar arrays here. You've got the arm, which is quite long. I'll show you the spec in a minute, but I won't go through all of this because basically we want to see the images and uh, we want to do the research ourselves, perhaps. You know, I'm not here to read everything out for you. Uh, here is the, f the very first image it took, um, wh which still has the lens cap on. And you can see all the dirt stuck to the lens cap here where they landed. Now, obviously, the, the, rock the, the rockets would have stirred up a lot of crap from the ground, which has gone all over the place. And what they did, they actually waited about 10 or 15 minutes or so, per perhaps longer, to let the dust settle before they took the lens cap off, which is obviously very sensible. But notice the colour of the, you've got the horizon here, you've got a rock here, just here. Can't really see a lot of detail there, but yeah, there's a rock there, big deal. <laughs> and we have the horizon. Now this is taken by, I think, one of the, uh, the nav cams, which is just quite low down on, on the, uh, the lander, on the InSight lander. And what this has is a fisheye lens, which means that it distorts the horizon, but gives it a wide angle so, so that it can see what's going on around uh, when they're using the robotic arm and such like, and using the instruments, they can actually see quite a long way round with just the one camera, okay? Uh, but basically what we've got here is the horizon, which is very curved because of the fisheye lens, and a very blue looking sky. In fact, the colour of this sky, even though there's a lens cap on, doesn't quite match the colour of the sky in the later image, which was taken without the lens cap, which is this one here. So, this has gone back to this, all the usual colour we get from the Curiosity rover and used to get from also the uh, Opportunity and Spirit rovers, which is that kind of uh, yellowy, orangey sort of colour. Um, so, but, so the image quality isn't fantastic, but that's not really what it's there for. They're only working science cameras. They're not uh, really designed to take massive, beautiful pictures. Uh, they're built for reliability and sturdiness and resistance to extreme temperature changes. Okay. Uh, there was also this image, which was taken by, I think, Marco B. And Marco B was one of the little CubeSats, which was um, launched at... at alongside InSight on the same, from the same rocket and uh, what, what they were there for was to, to relay information about the uh, InSight as it came in close and this is actually as, as the CubeSat fly, is flying away from Mars so we're looking back at Mars and this is the solar array on the CubeSat here but a pretty poor quality image but that's Mars you can see the scan lines and stuff in, in the image where it's been taken but that's just uh, an interesting one anyway to throw in there. Um, links will be below for all these images, of course. Uh, the, the main page we want is this one. So we only have these so far. Uh, that CubeSat image um, isn't on here for some reason. So all you've got to do is come here and click on these, okay? But I'll put individual links to these down below because these will only be up on here for seven days and these will be gone. And when you come back to the page, they won't be here. So I'll put individual links for these and all the other uh, images that you can download and take a look at to, to look at the instruments and stuff. We've got, we've got close-ups of um, the instrumentation and stuff like this, which shows you all the different parts to the, the InSight uh, 
science module, okay? So that's all good. And if, if any of you were really interested in this Mars stuff and you want to get all the links for all the other stuff that's going on, like the Curiosity rover and the other missions and satellites like the MRO and, and such like, then you can easily do that by downloading my free mobile app you can also use this on your um, lap laptop like I do, uh, or on your tablet, or, or any device, okay? And this is totally free and will not harm your uh, device, and it has no adverts or no BS on it whatsoever, and it will link you to every single space mission that there is currently, and including some of the old ones like the Apollo missions and some of the older... Uh, missions like Clementine and, and stuff like that going right back to 1960s it basically will link you to everything and if you click on the research page on the app here it will take you to this and you've basically got you've got the insight mission at the bottom here you have all the all the free software that I use uh, you've got uh, access to all sorts of different software for, for um, looking at some of the really large satellite images you've got like high view here You've got loads of free software, and there's all the different sites here which I, I use on a daily basis to research Mars and all the other planets, okay? But I use it, I use it on my desktop. I have, what I did is I, I, I saved the uh, app. When you, when you get the app, you click on it like that, uh, install it, and then you can save once, and then open it, and then you can save it in your toolbar like I've got here, and just have it and click on it whenever you like. Uh, I've got it just here. And it, it saves you having to trawl through lots of different websites because they're all in one place. And all you do is go on here and pick the website you want to go to, scroll down, and then off you go. If you want to go to High Rise, there we are, the, the MRO. And they've got all these beautiful colour images from the MRO. So there we are. Um, that is completely free. There's no adverts and no BS on that, so that's all good. If you're wondering what we found on Mars recently, well, here's something I found the other day. You may find this very hard to believe if you're, if you're not one of my subscribers or into this kind of thing. But I found one of these the other day, which looks very much like a raptor skull on the surface of Mars. Um, and here's the video. I did two videos of this. I did a short one and a longer one. Well worth a look at. I mean, I really can't see what else it can be. So... Thanks for watching everybody. As I said, all links will be below to all these pages. Image clips coming up now.